right. So our annual theme is living out loud. It's a great theme. And it's got a lot packaged and packed up with it. Um, earlier this, this year, we have talked about living out loud through the lens of vulnerability and um, authenticity. And this month, we are um, experiencing living out loud through the topic of embracing self-care. And self-care has a lot of components in it, too. <laughs> um, and, and it's something that, you know, you won't, uh, we won't find a lot of people talking about, much less doing, much less being. Um, for some reason, the topic of in self-care has kind of, you know, been seen, it's an important thing, and it's been with us throughout time and memorial since the, the beginnings of humankind. I referenced this last, last week when I was talking about going back into the indigenous cultures and back into history that the leaders of, of tribes and medicine men and healers, including women, um, really were the, the keepers of, uh, and purveyors of self-care because they knew that the survival of their communities depended on it. That, that, that you needed people that were healthy, that were strong, that were compassionate, and and able to um, keep intact the sanctity and the sacredness and the tenderness of their communities. So today I want to, uh, another component of, of this element of um, self-care and is being able to balance the qualities and the experiences of grief and joy. And it's as timely now as it's ever been. I mean, my goodness, folks, look where we've been the last three and a half years. The last three and a half years have been the proving ground. And a big kind of <laughs> experiment in these two qualities of grief and joy. It's a little up, a little down. But it's been, um, the, the idea there is, is all the changes that we went through with the, the beginnings of, of COVID and uh, the fear factor that ran through a, a lot of what was in circulation out there and the personal work that we each had to take on to try to bring some understanding to what seemed it like was not even understandable <laughs> for ourselves and to learn and grow from it. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. You know, I, everyone has experienced grief in their life, yeah? Yes. How about joy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing, you know, joy, that's easy enough to handle because, you know, it feels really good. Grief is a whole other thing. We've all experienced grief, but not everybody really knows how to, what to do with it. So what I want to talk about and share today is maybe some ideas about um, how grief can lead us to um, experiencing joy eventually, because they are partners, they dance together, they're two sides of the same equation. And here's what we know too, that um, it's an unavoidable emotion. And we all go through it at some point in our life. Um, I can honestly say I don't know of anyone personally that is super proficient or professional at dealing with grief because it's a multi-headed, <laughs> multi-faceted experience, and it's different for everybody. Um, and we experience grief not only when we lose someone that is dear to us through the death and dying process, but other situations that, you know, I referenced earlier what happened with, with COVID, other situations that um, call for change when we didn't plan it ourselves, okay? We didn't expect it. Um, or uh, losing, having a loss of any kind. Um, and most losses we didn't plan for or manage ourselves either. <laughs> they just happen. <laughs> and, and so that thread of self-care 
um, is something that we need to embrace then in those, those very trying and difficult times. And it's really imperative for us to understand how to surf through the water of grief and get to joy. And why is that so? Because grief has the power to lead, uh, get in our heads first and lead our, our minds to entertaining things like negative thoughts. Grief itself, just all on its own, isn't either good or bad. However, we have this propensity for labeling things, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> Um, and, and it is an emotion that needs to be attended to in, in order to avoid that thing that we call spiritual bypass. Spiritual bypass is that glossing over. It's not taking the opportunity to dip deeper into the well and do that deeper in work and, and find some understanding. And depending upon the grief that we might be experiencing, it, it might cause different types of feelings like maybe low self-esteem or having regrets, standing in confusion. Well, that's just to not mention a few. What you can do, though, is remember that every person is a perfect spiritual being going through a challenging or trying phase in their life. And grief, by the way, does not mean that you are imperfect. And it doesn't mean that you're weak. I've heard it said that the depth of your grief is a reflection of the depth of your love. And that love includes what we cherish, or who we cherish, and what we value, and what we, clo 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 what we hold close and dear. Those things, those, the people, the experiences that we have put our attention in and on is, are what help define who we are. Grief is a reflection of our values, what we value. And I don't know you about you. I mean, I grow in good times as well as difficult times, but the difficult times can take you to a wholly different place than the good times do. Um, to places that we don't look at or experience perhaps very often, places that have been really hanging around, begging for our attention. Begging for our attention. And what we need to do in dealing with grief is find refuge, take refuge in our spiritual practices. Doing inspirational reading, meditating, being quiet. As Karen Drucker is so wonderfully saying, one breath at a time, one step at a time. Put your, don't let yourself be isolated. Get together with your spiritual community. Let yourself be embraced. Let yourself be supported. Let your voice be heard. And seek out some professional help and guidance. I know for myself when my oldest daughter, Alicia, died suddenly from heart failure two, and a, two years and three months ago. Um, that's what I did. I, I uh, got with uh, a minister friend who specializes in, in grief work, and uh, took her class, the Grief Recovery Method. Um, and you know, I stayed in close contact with uh, my other mentor ministers. Um, fortunately, my, my main mentor minister has had a lot of um, guiding people through uh, transitioning and then dealing with their friends and their families and other loved ones and even physical uh, states and planning and being a, an executrice for wills. So, you know, Reverend Penny has just been aw awesome over these, these months since Alicia's passing. Um, and the grief took me to places I didn't even know was there. I did not even know was there. I, um, 
you know, and then I went through all the usual stages of how it being, you know, angry and confused and kind of numbing out. Um, even through all of all of that, and over many, many, many months, and even still today, I never lost my joy. I never lost my joy. For in one moment, I would be grieving not, not having her physical presence. And the next moment, I'd be um, <clears throat> in a memory, remembering, remembering her, her joy, her joy, her laughter. Um, God, at times I would go up to see her, and she'd go out golfing with me, and I let her drive that golf cart. Oh my God, what a wild ride! <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, you know, take, taken back to various parts of her growing up, and I remember, you know, she was just a, a funny kid. She didn't want to get born the right way. We had to do a C-section. And I can remember the first time I laid eyes on her, and I looked at her eyes, and I thought, oh my God, we have an old soul here. <laughs> All that and more. So what I, what I wanted to share is, bottom line is, we don't have to go through this alone. We don't have to. And as a spiritual being, having a human experience, we have some great opportunities. We can think. We can think. And we have the ability to create. And we have the ability to carry out from thought and ideas to an inspiration to creating and taking action. And so with those abilities, we can create joy even when it seems to be really absent. We all have the power to harness joy and have a happier, deeper, richer, fulfilling life, even in the midst of grief and uncertainties. Where does joy come from? Your heart your heart. The source of your joy isn't anywhere out there. To start with, anyway. <laughs> it's deep within your heart. So it's always here. It's always here, ready and available to, to be expressed through you and by you. And grief, grief is the other side of the joy that we experience in this human journey which, if we're able to look at, look at it straight in the face, and I think I have, it can be a messenger that you have been needing to catapult you into the next level of your greater yet to be. Now somewhere in between grief and joy, in their dance, there's this little thing called surrender. Part of the process of grieving, I think, is letting go of what you think you know. And letting go of some other things, too. Um, I, th I would say the grieving thing has been one of the most humbling things I've ever gone through, because it, you cannot grieve and not be vulnerable. And at the same time, you cannot grieve and feel the power of your authenticity and your vulnerability. The most important activity for us to do in the grieving moments when we're feeling loss is to be with it. Don't try to push it away, ignore it, or pretend it's not there by getting yourself so doggone busy that you have no time to share or discover what it's trying to tell you or trying to propel you to be or lead you to your own heart's desires. You know, they say what you resist will persist. Well, grief is one of those things that will not ever go away. It doesn't go away. And when you try to ignore it or repress it, it manifests itself in the most undesirable and untimely ways. Most notably in unhealthy attitudes or behaviors that are more, more intense than usual. Things like depression, anger, a lack of sleep, 
having a short fuse, having a tendency to be isolated, and not engaging. Those are just a few. So when you become aware then of that gift that lies behind grief, you can transform it into a great work that demonstrates what brings joy to yourself and to others. For what I have learned now and now know and respect is what I learned about myself in the process and the opportunity to be vulnerable and feel so very deeply and be supported by spirit's loving arms and tenderness. Not only just in the feel of that energy, but in the very real ways of being supported by community, by friends, by family. Now, I mentioned that <laughs> joy and grief are kind of like two sides of the same coin, and, and the two terms uh, might seem really opposite of one another, for joy is a really pleasant feeling generally, um, whereas grief tends to be not as pleasant, it can really be deeply unpleasant. Um, and coexistence for these two qualities seems almost impossible. However, in trying times when grief might be all that's around, there can be sparks of joy, even though they may not last for very long. And even though it might be impossible to experience, it does happen, though, when we open up our hearts to listen, to be with it, to care for it, and to love it, too. It's not an easy task, but it's not impossible. As your origin is joy, so the idea here is for us to align with who we really are, to be able to do and feel all that we are. Even in the dark days, the low times of grieving through COVID, navigating change and letting go, there is always, always an opening for joy. Even if it is in remembering who we are and in that moment of knowing our joy, of knowing and trusting that our good is never ever taken from us and it can never be lost. For myself, I found the promises of God to be the things that kept me going. And I saw their fulfillment and their demonstration. This teaching of science of mind, metaphysics in general, it is a way of life. It is fun and it's easy when things are going well, <clears throat> but, and it's easy to practice what we believe, but what about when things aren't going so well, aren't so easy? Well, what then? Hmm. I will tell you this. This teaching is, I have proved it on both sides of that coin. <laughs> it's done unto you as you believe. Change your thinking, change your life. I mean, it's easy. I mean, it's really kind of amusing and fun to manifest the right parking spots. It's a whole, it's a it's a bit more of a of a challenge to look grief and all of its little minions like fear and doubt in the face and say, I'm ready. I'm ready to listen. What can you teach me? And then just sit with that. Hmm. But it's proving. Look what happens, man. Compassion. You get deep understanding. Because you understand that the, what I shared earlier. The hurt that comes, the thing, things we feel when we grieve, is because of love. It's because of love. And the things that we cherish, We've put in our, we've allowed in our lives, we've claimed them in our lives because of love. And I will tell you, my daughter may not have her physical flesh body here in this dimension, but the love never died. 
It keeps going on. Keeps going on. So, I think we have an understanding now, at least I hope we do, that grief can coexist with joy in trying times. And it's important for us to know that we've contained that thought process by becoming more aware of what we're thinking when we're feeling our pain. It's equally important to recognize that whatever loss that might have you be grieving can be an opportunity to gain experiences on something new, something better, something greater. And that's the way it goes. It's a preparation ground. It's preparation preparing you for something better. So it's really imperative to know how to navigate between all of the, the flurry of emotions that we feel in a time when the mind is just filled, maybe even overcome with grief, and letting joy be the thing that overwhelms us, every now and then anyway. And then there's, it's a lot healthier all the way around. Joy heals the body and it heals the mind. So I think we know it's not healthy for us to stifle our grief. And, but it also doesn't hurt us to allow us to feel it in its fullness and even its glory. Every time you feel grief, it's important to give some joy some space in there though too. Just as I did in my grieving process. In those moments when I would be feeling a twinge of pain, called back to a memory of joy that I shared with my daughter. And then looking around and being appreciative. That's the thing. Do the gratitude exercise at the end of the day. You cannot be in grief. You cannot be in anger when you are in gratitude. <laughs> this will keep you in a very reasonable balance. It's an important to note that grief doesn't go away because it's part of our the, the prism of our human emotions. And one that we need to experience from time to time. However, the keys for us lie in asking some things. How do I approach it? And what do I think about it? By being here today and opening yourselves up, you can begin to think about it in a new way. Not an old way that never served you. You can let that go. And open up to something much greater, much deeper. Can you see the good in regardless of whatever situation is? And remember, at times grief might seem to be really dormant, <laughs> but it's just stashed away in the recesses of your mind. And if you don't give it proper time and care, it will, re it will emerge because it needs some attention. So it's a really imperative to keep your mind really healthy by doing your spiritual practices, by practicing self-care and engaging in activities that bring joy. Laugh. Go take a walk out in nature and be astounded in awe. We, we live in such a great place because it's so readily available for us to do. <laughs> Honestly, it's great. Oh, there's a quote here I wanted to do. Uh, let's see here. From Nancy Burns, there is freedom knowing you can carry joy and grief together. That's from her uh, book, Closure, The Rush to End Grief and What It Costs Us. Mm. Mm. So, different perspective today. <laughs> if you're ready to try something on, there's some things you might want to ask yourself. Is it natural to feel guilty for feeling joyful during a grief, grieving time? And can there be an equilibrium between grief and joy? Huh. If check this out, do a little self self check here. Is ignoring your grief counterproductive in your own self self care equation? And how can you be joyful in times of grief? And then you might define for yourself, 
what the importance of balancing grief and joy means for you. Now you can affirm with me. I now release. I now release all that no longer serves me. All that no longer serves me. And I choose. And I choose to embrace. To embrace joy. Joy. And so it is. And so it is.